Hi, I'm Edwin Samuelson, and welcome to The Cinephiles, a show that allows you to eavesdrop on the conversation of fellow film fanatics. Well, it's the end of the summer, and so that means we'll be discussing four of the big superhero films that came out this summer. Uh, they're based on comic books, and uh, we'll get the movies we'll be discussing are The Dark Knight, Hellboy 2, Incredible Hulk, and, of course, Iron Man. But before I begin, let me introduce my uh, co-host to my left, Mr. Eric Cohen. Hello. To, to his left, Jeff Galishaw. And to his left, Mike Fultz. All right. Well, let's start off with... Uh, Wait, hold on. What? I've only said this two other times. But yes, we're talking about the summer comic book superhero films of 2008. But we are not going to be talking about that piece of shit, Hancock. Well, that doesn't even count as a comic book movie or a superhero movie. It's just... Guys, uh, comments on that? Comments? No comments. Let's move on. Okay. Well, uh, let's start off with the film that's been in development for, for, for many, many, many years. I remember... How many in, years? I'd say at least 15, 20, because I remember in the 1990s... I, uh, I, I, remember, I remember in the 90s uh, uh, seeing Tom Cruise's name attached to play the lead role, and thankfully uh, they wised up and actually went to a real actor and got Robert Downey Jr. to play the title role, which is Iron Man which was directed by John Favreau, a director not really known for directing uh, comic book type films. He was more... Well, he did it. Zaruthra. Well, how is it? Am I pronouncing that Zathura. Right? Zathura. That's more of a, ch- like a children's Which was a film. children's thing, but it had that sci-fi, pulpy fantasy, fantasy aspect yeah. to it. That was probably his little testing ground. And Elf. I, I, and um, I... This one, I... I gotta say, I was not expecting much, because I'm not a kid, I'm not a big John Favreau film, a fan. I saw a few of his films, like the ones he made with Vince Vaughn. I thought they were overly self-indulgent and just crap. However, it looks like he actually grew up, actually said, I'm going to make a real movie, get a real actor. And it was very smart they got Robert Downey Jr. because you know what? He's the reason the film works. He's brilliant in the film. Um, the role of Tony Stark, the, self, the millionaire who uh, is a big egomaniac, would be very hard to play because you could make him very unlikable and very, you know, just arrogant. And uh, Robert Downey Jr. does a very good job of balancing that where he makes him very likable yet, you know, self-centered. And I thought he did a brilliant job of it. And uh, Robert Downey Jr. sold the movie. I mean, he's fantastic. And I, that's the reason I really enjoyed this film. Well, the, the person that we got to see as Tony Stark is somebody that I've always seen. Every time I see Robert Downey Jr., I fully believe that he never does a bad job. And, and, and I'm just really, really thankful that Hollywood finally woke up and said, this is a guy that we can bank our money on. And you know, the rest of America and the world says, you know something, we love him too. And uh, this wasn't the only thing that he's done this summer that's been fantastic, but that's for another show. But yeah, it really made Tony Stark uh, an A-list superhero, especially when it comes to the Hollywood bigs and, and people. Because everybody talks about Spider-Man and the X-Men and Fantastic Four, but you know, Iron Man comes out and the special effects were great. I was very surprised, too, about special effects, because Iron Man was a completely CG creation, and I, and I really don't like it. Well, they took a lot of care. I mean, for one thing, John Favreau, I mean, say what you will about his early work, he always struck me as a very intelligent guy in the industry. I mean, I remember watching Dinner with Five, his IFC show, and I th- thought he came across as a very grounded, intelligent guy. He really understood how the machinery works. And so it, it seemed like he cannily set up his life for Iron Man, or Great film like Iron Great dialogue. Man. It's a very, I, I, what I like about Iron Man, it's a very sophisticated movie. It's almost like a 1930s screwball comedy with a superhero element, basically. And it was well cast, well written. That's what made well the film acted. for me. Really yes. well really well cast and really well acted. I mean, Jeff Bridges was great in it. Um, a but, 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 that but, you weren't sure about. But Robert Downey Jr., I mean, when, when they announced his casting, he had a huge fan support behind that. Everybody I thought was it was like, brilliant. Yes, the word that's the day probably went. why the studios were like, okay, let's give it to him. Let me ask you guys, and I know you guys both read the comics. I, I know you at least read I've the comics. I've never, actually, I'm not a huge Iron I mean, I'm not like a superhero fan. I was I, a writer, I, artist I fan. Was, yeah, I was, a, uh, I was an Iron Man fan. So I'm, not, I'm not that now knowledgeable how does this, about Now, Iron how Man. does the comic book stack up to the film? I mean, do you think it's an accurate depiction? Oh, yeah. Of the character? Very, very. And you know something with the sequel? We're going to get even more into the Iron Man that was really made famous uh, with his troubles with his alcohol problems in the 80s. Is this more of an Ultimates uh, no, Tony no, Stark? No, no, this is, is the original. This is not, not the okay. Ultimates at all. This is, this is really true to form on how... The only, the only difference is, is in the comic books, instead of being in the midst of like a uh, terroristic uh, camp in Afghanistan... He was a Vietnam hero. 
He was a wealthy industrialist that was captured by the Viet Cong and constructed this suit of armor. And the villain that he the Iron Man was a character big, fat didn't Vietnamese exist. Guy. Did the, the Iron Man character did, didn't exist before Vietnam, though? I thought that was no, like no. This was a Vietnam era okay. uh, film. I, or, I have um, no character. idea. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, I mean, and just. And let's give credit to the late, great Stan Winston because his team of special effects artists actually came up with the prototype yes. armor that was on display at the New York Comic Con, which was really a visual treat to see, this, mm -hmm. uh, this armor. And Robert Downey Jr. actually had to sit in a couple suits of armor for, uh, for this. It wasn't all CGI. There was, an actual, there was actual suits of armor. Mm. What and, and James Ro or, uh, the character Terrence, Terrence Howard. Howard was excellent as James Rhodes and Gwyneth Paltrow who I don't like she was great as Pepper Potts that was going to be my comment because it's uh, very rare that a director to me can make Gwyneth Paltrow's uh, characters either passionate or likeable. actual likable yes and so that's one of the uh, many things that I enjoyed about the film, but overall it was great. It had it was funny when it needed to be. It was serious when it needed to be. I was entertained, and I really enjoyed the film. I thought they did a really good job of mixing the humor with the with the with the thrills. You know, I mean, it wasn't like it would be some very funny moments, but then all of a sudden it gets serious. But it wasn't an, a jarring, abrupt jump. Um, I really love the whole sequence in Afghanistan where he's building the first Iron Man suit and. Uh, I, I really thought that was genuinely very disturbing and creepy, you know, where he, you know, he has this thing to his chest that could blow at any time, and this which is very also very faithful to the common books. I, I loved it. And I loved. Were you uh, surprised at how much you liked it? I was because I can't. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't care for John Favreau, but after this, I'll actually check out some more of his stuff because I saw Made. I saw another couple of films of his, and I really thought they were shit. Uh, this one, I, I have to say, he did a really good job because he trusted Robert Downey Jr. to say, "Hey, this is your movie." You know, you're the one who's going to be carrying this movie. Let's do it with you. And then he got, let Downey Jr. take control, really. And that's why the movie works on all levels. Robert Downey Jr. is the movie. I mean, he is phenomenal. I mean, he would give me one of my best performances of the year. Well, when you mentioned that, uh, when you mentioned that Tom Cruise was uh, led, they were going to change the storyline, actually. And they were going to have uh, um, Tony Stark actually permanently sealed in the armor and kind of do a modern-day Count of Monte Cristo. Um, or I'm sorry, the man in the Iron Mask. I'm sorry. Then they wouldn't but even need to do yeah, Iron, so, Iron Man. Movie. Um, yeah, hmm. and which was a takeoff of not so much Iron Man, but it was a takeoff of an independent comic called The Coffin. Uh, but I think there were some rights issues there, and they got it over to John Favreau. That's really weird because yeah. I read The Coffin, and I have no idea why. Because the whole part, concept of The Coffin is is the guy is dead. Yeah. And he's just preserved in this this suit of armor, which is why it's called The Coffin. Mm -hmm. But. I'm just glad that Tom Cruise was not in it because... Why whatever. would Tom Cruise want to spend an entire movie with a mask on? That's the thing I don't understand. Don't ask me. I, I don't think it would have worked with Tom Cruise because number one is um, he just doesn't have the personality that, that, that Robert Downey Jr. has. And Robert Downey Jr. actually... Believe, I was very impressed how he bulked himself up for the role. And uh, I thought he did... I just... I can't stop giving him a Well, I don't know. I think, I think that Tom... I'm not trying to defend Tom Cruise or take anything away from Robert Downey Jr. I think it would just be a different movie, a different take on the character. I mean... Don't you think I think what Robert Downey Jr. brought to it wasn't really written into the character. There's just the part that he's sort of an alcoholic and he's sort of a spoiled brat of a mature man. But Robert Downey Jr. really elevated it because he brought his own. Well, that's what I'm saying. He's but he brought his own personality, exactly. Right. And, and he brought he brought a ton of charm. And, I, and Tom just, Cruise cannot bring that amount of charm. I'm right. sorry. And, and the thing, too, is that Robert Downey Jr. has a dark side to him, which I think really works well with his, the character of uh, Tony Stark, you know. Definitely, I would say, uh, one of the best comic book adaptations in the last few years. What would you guys say? Oh, one of the best, period. One of the best, period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was very impressed. I'm really looking forward to the sequel. It, it really raised the bar. Yeah, it's going to be one of the best. It's going to be, a, the sequel is going to be even better, I think, because the fir as, as they always say, um, Robert, I'm sorry, Richard Donner said in the first Superman film, he said, well, the first film we have to set up the rules because they're already established. In the sequel, we can have more fun because we can do what we want to. So I think the sequel will be even better. I really do. And I'm looking forward to it. All right, well, let's get on to the next film, uh, the big film of the summer. And that film will be a relaunch of the Hulk franchise, which uh, the previous film was directed by Ang Lee. This is not a sequel, but a complete uh, relaunch of the franchise, which is very surprised because it was only f less than, I believe, less four years ago that the uh, Ang Lee version came out. It was a hundred-plus million-dollar movie. 
Um, it's also another Marvel comic. It's another comic, com yeah, another comic, uh, Marvel comic release. Um, this one got a lot of um, well, the praise reason, uh, and uh, and a uh, lot of hate because of its serious approach. Some people liked it, some people didn't. Um, you mean the Ang Lee version? The Ang Lee version. The, re the reason why it was remade is Marvel was bought out by this financial consortium and Abby Arad. And well, no, 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 no. This was uh, Avi Arad was still a part of the old guard. But he had some influence on the new money, money handlers with Marvel, and he felt that uh, the first Hulk was a disaster, and he used his influence to convince them that the Hulk was still a money-making franchise and that they should reinvest this. And instead of being, I think it was a universal uh, They're product. They're universal. But this one around uh, had Marvel's, uh, had more money at stake for Marvel. They, they could make more money off of it because they were going to make very little off the first Hulk because most <coughs> of those rights were uh, universal. And uh, so they gave it another shot, and they felt that it wasn't very kind to the fans because there wasn't uh, a big villain in there. Avi Arad felt that if you made a Hulk film, that you had to have the abomination in it, and so on and so forth. Um, so that that's how why we well, have this film. quote unquote. They said the first one was a very too intelligent. This one is more action oriented. Um, well, you have Lewis Le Letterer as who, your director, who actually who did who actually did the Transporter films, which are fun, but I don't know if he'd be the right director for this film. Um, I don't know what to think about this film. This film, to me, uh, I just—it's very blah. I don't—I—I I, I still think the Hulk is a very hard film to translate to the screen uh, because the, the Hulk has no personality in the films. In fact, I believe in the comic books, I when I read them years ago, the Hulk actually spoke. Um, and but this one is just a—you know—a creature that just destroys the city when it gets mad. There's no depth to the character, and it's very boring. This one, to me. I mean, it, everything on paper looks like it should work. You got Edward Norton, who's not a bad actor. You got uh, Liv great. Tyler, who, who uh, goes wrote the could, script. Yep, and he didn't <laughs> get credit, and he got pissed, and so he refused to promote the film for a while, right. supposedly. Um, what, would he, what do you guys think of this one? I mean, it's I everyone's it was recast. Okay. I think of, of the films that we're going to mm -hmm. discuss. For me, it's probably the least memorable. I, I'm probably one of the few people that actually like Ang Lee's take on the Hulk. I know there were, it's flawed. I know there was problems with it, but when I watched the, the Incredible Hulk. I found myself missing things from Ang Lee's Hulk. Like I miss, uh, what's his name, Sam Elliott's Ross, and that relationship between him and 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 Jennifer Connelly's take on that character Liv Tyler plays, and and all sorts. Of things. There's so much. There was so much more richness, and yeah, there's pretentious moments in it, and it tried too hard to be a film as opposed to a movie. But I just felt that that. The Incredible Hulk went in the complete opposite direction to the point where I even thought like the CGI was sloppy. I thought that that the mo it was like some of the worst motion capture I've ever seen. Is this in the first film? Or no, the, in the second. The one. second one. Where where it may not have been as advanced in the first one, mm -hmm. but there was an attempt to create natural movement in that character and blinking and stuff like that. Whereas in this one, it just seemed like let's just throw a video game graph, you know, like like CGI up there. Ang Lee actually did the motion was the motion capture performer. In the I original. think in concept there were cool things. Like I like the idea of the abomination. I kind of like the design of the abomination. But it just felt like you know what? It just felt like I was watching a PS3 video game match between two char two characters, and and I didn't it, I wasn't involved in any way. And and he I know Mike disagrees with me, but I swear to God, Tim Roth started off with an American accent in this film, and it became more and more British as I the movie went on. I have to agree with him on that. You know, I, and I was like <laughs> surprised. And no, I, I do agree well, with him. <laughs> Because he does, I mean, it's, there's something unusual I, about it. I, he, I he understood movie. Eric's comment before I saw the movie because he saw it before me. I, I don't see any of that in there. I I, well, one, he was supposed to be an American military man. No, no, no. He said in his interview that it wasn't It wasn't a, uh, it wasn't wasn't a. a big deal. Actually, Emil Blonsky was a uh, Russian agent. That's what it was in the movies. Well, his accent but they changes just, in the movie. But though. they just went with it. Or in the comic books. In the movie, he was. He, he's British. Movie, he's, he's a British but special they forces In the guy. movie, he was a guy who I thought, uh, my impression was this. No, was no, they announce it before he comes in. That they, he's on He's on loan from the Royal Navy or whatever. No, they don't. Yeah, they do. Where? Go back and see it. At the beginning, when he's getting off the helicopter. You show me the screenplay? I got I'll buy you a burger. Jeff, please, can you go for it? Okay. Uh, take, well, I, I, I don't think as deeply about this film as apparently everybody else does. I was entertained. It was okay. But, you know, pretty much a day or two after it, I could forget it. I, really I barely remember you. it. I, I thought Edward it. Norton was good in it. I Oops. did think he was Edward Norton. I thought he did a very good I thought he was better than Eric Bana. In some yeah. ways, he was better than Eric Bana. But, um... The, and the thing, too, is, I mean, uh, Nicholas... Yeah, I'm, I'm agreeing with Edwin now. Uh, Nick Nolte, uh, it was who was, was in the original... I don't know what to think of him as a villain or a bad guy in the movie, but he was an interesting villain. I thought Tim Roth 
was uh, nothing against Tim Roth. I thought his just character was very boring, and uh, it's it's very much like the same film. The two creatures fight, and that's it. You know, it's it's boring. I'm, I thought it was a fun popcorn movie. Nowhere near as good as Iron Man. I like the first Hulk, and I like the second Hulk. Which one do you like better, though? Um, you know something? I think stylistically, I like the first one. Uh, I like the storyline of the second one a little bit better. I like the way that Ed Norton is on the run at the beginning. It's not quite an origin story. It's him on the run. I liked him in Brazil. I thought that was an interesting take that he had managed to escape all the way to Brazil. And he, I loved the chase scene throughout the, the slums on the hills. I thought that was great. And there was, uh, you know, Eric does have a point that some of these special effects and motion capture seem a little bit uh, lunk-headish. But there's a point where... Uh, the Hulk is running alongside a Humvee and he pushes it over in the park at the, on the college campus. It looked amazing. I thought it looked amazing. I thought it looked like the Hulk was actually there running. Um, One improvement I have to say though is them making the Hulk a little smaller because in the first film he's like as tall as a giant building. You know, this one he is a little. No, smaller. he's about the same size. I think he's both. a little smaller. Uh, they, even, they, they look. They look like they reduced his size a little uh, bit. William Hurt's terrible. Uh, yeah, which is too bad because I like William Hurt. And it was, he's terrible. He's yeah. no uh, Sam Elliott. He's so. Um, yeah. Liv Tyler and Jennifer Connelly, they were they were both fine. Um, you know, in the both separate films, uh, I like I said, I enjoyed it. I liked Tim Blake Nelson, uh, his little goofy role as the kind of uh, college campus. Oh, what was he? He was kind of like the deep throat that was helping Bruce Banner with the situation, and then he becomes the leader. Right. Uh, which is another famous Hulk villain. I like the way they set that up, but of course, we'll probably not see a sequel to this film because it didn't do that well. Yeah. Um, I, I, it had a great opening weekend, but the drop-off was... Yeah, it, it, it looks cheap also. Let's move on. Let's move on to the next one. Um, all right, well, the next... Oh, by the way, I have, the final thing I have to say. I love Stan Lee's cameo. Awesome cameo. Love the way that's set up. Actually, and, he had, can I, we, and he had a great cameo in Iron Man. But I thought Iron Man was the best Stan Lee cameo ever. It was just a nice, quick moment. It was hilarious. Yeah, it was That's my two cents. All right, well, let's get on to the, I think, uh, as my opinion, the best comic book film I've seen maybe ever. And I, I was uh, actually, let's go to the next one that was released after the Hulk. Uh, actually, let's go uh, timeline. Okay, I'm, like, I'm going, no, it's the Dark, it's the dark Knight. No, 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 Hellboy no. 2 came Hellboy out. Hellboy 2 came out before. All right, well, yeah. I'm going to give it to you. Go Save ahead. the best for last. You go, Mike. Go, uh, uh, no, uh, um, Jeff, Jeff, Hellboy yeah. 2. Hellboy 2, which is the continuing adventures of Hellboy. Now, I'm going to admit, I was not the hugest fan of the first one. I didn't think it was totally horrible. I just didn't really get into it because he was just facing all these monsters, and it just seemed like there was nothing behind it. This one I liked a lot better because... There was a villain who wasn't truly too evil. You could see where he was coming from, his point of view. And I like that uh, I cared more about the characters this time because I feel like they gave them more of a background and story and a reason for you to care about the characters. My, uh, the one thing uh, is a minor thing, but I really enjoyed was the uh, new character they brought in who was the mist in that what is it? The suit? Yeah, that's uh, that's a professor. Um, no, it's not. No, 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 no. His, uh, his name yeah, is, uh, uh, he's the German guy. Uh, oh, I want to yeah. say Kurt something. Johann. Uh, Johann. Johann Strauss. Johann Strauss. Yes, to Sorry. me, he was like uh, the comic relief of the film, and he really helped move the movie along. My only quibble, and it's a small one, was that I miss David Hyde's voice work from the first film because I preferred his voice work as Abe Sapien than actually using Doug Jones, who is the physical embodiment of Abe Sapien in this film. But I have to say, I surprisingly enjoyed it. And unfortunately, after uh, The Dark Knight came out, its box office seemed to disappear along with the film. Uh, uh, Edwin, did you see the film by any chance? I'm not going to see it. Sorry. OK, so Eric, what are your thoughts on I the liked film? it a lot. I like Hellboy 2 a lot. In some ways, it's even better. I like the first Hellboy. I maintained it. I think it's the best. Uh, translation of H.P. Lovecraft, <laughs> even though you know, I just I just thought it was the best visualization of a Lovecraftian scenario on film, the first one. Uh, but yeah, I thought Hellboy Two had a lot of heart, which I really liked. Uh, it uh, you really felt for the characters. It was a nice rapport amongst the actors playing them. Um, I liked how the villain wasn't. You, you understood where he was coming from. There was a, the, the, we were afforded a little bit of sympathy towards him. And uh, and there were some there were some interesting moments where the heroes were challenged in certain ways, you know, like uh, Ape Sapien is willing to you know give up all humanity just because he loves this princess character, which I thought was interesting. And yeah, you know. I think this I think this film shows 
more imagination than most films we've seen in probably the last oh, the three to five market years. Oh, the Goblin Market sequence is just I mean, this guy, amazing. It, Guillermo del Toro, the Goblin Market thing, it's like out of a Terry Gilliam fever dream, you know, <laughs> what this guy produces. The script was funny. Um, it had its dark moments. Um, I think uh, Prince uh, Prince Noir, uh, uh, the, the main villain, mm -hmm. I thought he was a great villain. I liked his henchman, Mr. Wink. Um, I liked Hellboy on his perception of trying to do the right thing but also being scorned by the general public as a monster. I think one of the, two of the most amazing... And it doesn't get cliche too because that's a cliche thing. No. You know, so from Frankenstein onwards that's always been sort of a theme in a yeah. lot of films but they didn't it, it was handled very well. Two of the most amazing scenes in the film and Edwin just on these scenes alone you should be seeing it. Sorry. But there's this one scene where he kill, the Hellboy kills this plant elemental that is supposedly the last of its kind. And it's like a big monster. It's like destroying the city. But once he kills this thing, there's this like moment afterwards that's like incredibly beautiful, but also remarkably sad. And you sit there and go, wow, I this monster's been destroyed, but I feel horrible about it. And another thing, Edwin, why you should see this, maybe catch it on DVD, is uh, there is this wonderful scene where Hellboy comes and, and his team meets the Angel of Death. Oh, that's a great scene. And that yeah. is one of the great, that, that creature is so amazing, that monster is so amazing that it, it surpasses Cronin, the clockwork villain from the first Hellboy. All right, well, let's go on to the next one. I'm sorry, guys, because we just, I want to be sure. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not serious. We, we, don't have, we don't have much time because I want to discuss The Dark Knight, which is the biggest movie, one of the second biggest movies of all time, as they speak. Um, this was, I think, was the movie I was most anticipating and looking forward to this summer, and I'm happy to say it did not disappoint. Heath Ledger's uh, final role, uh, he is absolutely amazing. Um, he will probably his final role. His final role, Heath Ledger. Yes. Well, theoretically, oh, no. oh, yeah. Yeah. final film. final film role. He'll be in a part of, partially in a posthumously in uh, yeah the, uh, the Terry Imaginarium. Yeah. This one, uh, Heath Ledger really shows what a talent he was. I, I was really impressed with his performance. He was very, very ghoulish and creepy. And uh, it gives a very, a completely different interpretation of the Joker character than Jack Nicholson. Yeah, I, I think you're, I think you're selling this movie a little wrong. I think the real credit to this film goes to Chris Nolan. Well, I know I'm, I'm giving Chris Nolan credit because he was smart enough to cast Heath Ledger, and he, he even said he thought that Heath Ledger would bring a very dark and intense um, energy to the role, and he did. And I, 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 every minute that Heath Ledger was on screen, I couldn't take my eyes off him. That's because Christopher Nolan, at, at one of the talents you have to have as a director, is you're supposed to see things where nobody else sees anything. Absolutely. And he saw in Heath Ledger somebody who could make this Joker not only totally different, but maybe iconic. Yeah, I, that's the thing, too, is I, 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 had, well, I was skeptical. I was like, Heath Ledger, but he proved me wrong. I and completely agree with you. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also want to say, not just Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger was amazing. Everybody's it's not great. one of these, you know, it's not one of these things where all he died, let's pay him respect. He, no. he really he is it. that good in it. However, everybody is good, and that's what was amazing to me about this film. It was an ensemble film. Yeah, there wasn't. It wasn't. A weak it, link. It, it was, and, and it wasn't like the typical, like the prior Batman films, where by, Batman's like second fiddle to the villains, and you know, every single sequel. Batman's like the afterthought. It's always a showcase for the actor playing the villain. In this case, it really was an ensemble piece. Everybody had their moment to shine. Even Gary Morgan Oldman. Freeman had his moment. Lucius Fox, right? Lucius Fox had his moment. I love the little things with Michael Caine and Alfred. A little bit of history he was allowing us to peer into in his little like stories he was telling, uh, you know, uh, Wayne at one point. And it was like, wow, what? There's a fascinating history there they created for this character. I want to know more. You know, uh, Gary Oldman's fantastic what they did. I love Gary Oldman. Yes. With you know, his character. I, I, I got to say, though, you know what I love, too? I love the thing with Heath Ledger is where he keeps changing the story about how he got the scars on his face. I thought that was a brilliant move. Brilliant. And I have to say, the makeup on Aaron Eckhart is, I cannot believe I saw that in, a, in, a, in that movie. It was absolutely one of the most terrifying things I've seen in a movie for Aaron most, Eckhart was great. Yes, he Thank was. God they got Two-Face right. Thank God Her Harvey Dent was was Yeah, he wasn't finally. a joke like he was in Batman 3. Yeah. I mean, Jesus the other one, Christ. I mean, this one was... Maggie least. Gyllenhaal was great. I would say the only, to me, there was only one drawback to the film that was the scene with the fairies. 
I thought that was kind of clunky and awkward. The, fairies. Was, the other, the, yeah. the two fairies, you know, the boats. Yeah, the, the oh, boat with the prisoners. You know, I, th I thought oh, it was a great fairies, idea. Yeah. I thought there was a nice little moment in there. The most but forgettable I, but I thought part, it was I thought. like there was something about the pacing was off. The acting seemed too histrionic to me. The writing was weird. They I like the way I like the way that, that it was dark though, and it was and it really was dark. It wasn't like toned down. I mean, there's a scene where a guy has C4 implanted in his chest, you know, and goes into a police station. I like I like the fact too that not only was an intelligent film and it was well paced. But uh, the action scenes oh, were yes. second mm -hmm. to none, mm -hmm. and Very the way well Nolan had edited it, he did a wonderful job of cross cutting and, and getting such scenes an improvement back over his action direction from the first Batman film. Which don't get me wrong, it's still a damn good movie, but this one even yeah. improves on it. I think he learned a lot from the first film and took those lessons and put them in the, the, this next. But film. the most amazing this thing film. was the way that he grounded it in a reality we haven't seen superhero, uh, superhero films done in a you know ever. I don't think you know they're, they're, you know in the '70s you had like the Spider-Man TV series and they oh. made it in the real world <laughs> only because it was cheap to do it that way. But there was a con conscious effort to like ground this in the real world to the point where it's like if Sidney Lumet directed a superhero film, it would be Batman, you know, The Dark Knight. Well, I also like too that Christopher Nolan put a couple nice little touches in there as his tributes to James Bond. Mm -hmm. You know, especially the, yeah, the, uh, the rescue moment. scene with the Thunderball and the Rosa Club with the uh, pointy toed boot that the Joker was managed to try to kick Batman in the nuts with. And I love, there's a scene too you just made me think about Heath Ledger. My favorite scene with Heath Ledger is a scene where he, got, he says, you guys want to see a magic trick. I'm going to make this pencil disappear. Oh, awesome scene. That was t unbelievable. I still cannot believe that they did that. My favorite scene was even, a, uh, he was, was wordless. It was after the, you know, the, ho the, the hospital's like exploding and he's just like walking away and it's like the oddest, most left field walk. Just like but a little it, little kid playing a robot, right? Well, he said he, he has, Heath Ledger said he studied the right. He did study the right people for the movie. He studied, uh, of course, uh, Malcolm Sid, uh, McDowell from Clockwork Orange, his character, Johnny and, Rotten. and Johnny uh, uh, Sid Vicious actually. Sid Vicious. Did, did you see the original makeup concept? They had like uh, they, they they came up with the, the original makeup concept from. He looks like Ichi the Killer. Really? Yeah. Actually, it's it's Johnny Rotten. And he had that punk he's been hair. credited to talk about. Not Sid Vicious. It was Johnny Rotten that he had studied. Well, if you look at it, you can find it. It's on the internet. The photographs for the original Mega concert. He has Johnny Rotten hair. It's green. I, and I it has Ichi the, it's like Ichi the Killer, you know, where, where it's like so cut up, you actually see the veins and stuff. I love, I, 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 I love, the, I love the movie. I think it turned out great. Um, I, I can't tell you. I, I was so, so, you know, into the movie. I have been into the movie, like, into this, like, since I was a kid. I felt like a kid watching this. And in fact, when I went to go see it at the opening weekend, I was scared because I saw with a really, you know, audience that wouldn't stop talking. I was like, oh shit. The first 15, 20 minutes, they completely shut up and really were in the movie, and so that you knew that the movie really No, worked. I had a couple of assholes that kept talking. Well, but you know that in every movie. if you comment on the movie, that's fine. If you're talking about other shit, like, you know, what you're going to have for lunch the next day, fuck you, pay attention to the movie. But if you're going to be like, oh shit, that's a big explosion, then okay, that's well, fine. We forgot to also to give credit to Christian Bale. I like the way, I think Christian Bale. Credits. Oh, our credits. I think the way Christian Bale uh, really is tr continues his terrific performance in the first film. I love the, the way they Batman. end it. I love the way they end this and set it and set up for Absolutely. the sequel. Anyway, um, final Great words. Great summer uh, of movies. Final yeah, it was a good movie. I especially like the opening bank heist. Very, Very Michael Mannish. Shot in mm -hmm. IMAX. Nice. nice All reference. right. Well, until next week, uh, we hope you enjoyed the show and thank you for tuning in. And please check out our websites. Thank you. Yay, comic books.